Hey there folks, this is Hutch from Swiftkick Web, and today we're talking about ADA compliance and how it pertains to you and your website. Blind people don't wear makeup is an actual quote for an old colleague of mine in the web dev community. And it's wrong. It's actually pretty stupid, but it's a fairly prevalent point of view, despite it being completely baseless. There are all sorts of people with disabilities, all, all sorts of disabilities, not just blindness, who want to use your website, and it's our responsibility to make sure that they can. So what forms of impairments are we talking about? Well, there's, like I said, not just blindness, but we also need to make sure that they can use keyboards or alternative input devices to get around your website if they can't, for example, use a mouse or tap a screen. When we get into what makes a site ADA compliant, we need to talk about a couple of sets of guidelines. And there's three sets of accessibility guidelines that we need to focus on, WCAG, 508, and ADA. There's uh, several points of overlap between them, and there's a handy little link here. We'll actually go into some of those details. But so far as ADA is concerned, for e-commerce and most websites, unless you're a government website, in which case you're dealing with 508, for the most part, we're dealing with WCAG. And even in the case of 508, we'll get into in a moment, WCAG is still probably is gonna get you where you need to be. So WCAG, this Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. They were written by the W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. And it's a set of guidelines with different tiers of accessibility that detail how we should be building our websites, how we should be coding our websites so that all sorts of devices and readers and input and everything else will work as expected. Section 508 particularly pertains to government sites, but not just government sites. If you're not a government site, you may not be in the clear. Section 508 also pertains to companies that deal with the government, that are utilizing government tech. You should know whether or not 508 applies to you, and if so, um, you may need to make a few extra exceptions. Now, of course, 508 is supposed to be adopting WCAG as the standard going forward. At the time of writing this presentation, it was not yet ratified. That may not be the case anymore, but you should know both. So what is the ADA? ADA is the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's written in 1990, and it primarily was focused on brick and mortar businesses. It's, it's the reason why we uh, have wheelchair ramps at grocery stores, because we decided as a society that everybody should be able to have equal access. As of 2018, the federal sites needed to comply with ADA, and as we'll get into in a moment, the courts have uh, ruled that ADA also applies to digital businesses, e-commerce websites. So there's been 11, over 11,000 ADA lawsuits in 2019 alone, and businesses are not winning. Fox News lost, Burger King lose, Beyonce lost. If Queen Bay can't beat these lawsuits, what hope do you and I have? The lawsuits are going away. They're increasing year over year over year. This is in part due to increased awareness, but in part due to a number of, so we say, predatory uh, lawyers that are running some quick scans, finding a name to attach the lawsuit and sending it out. In many instances, these lawsuits are valid uh, by someone who wanted to use business and was not able to, but many of them are also like, uh, what do you call it? patent lawsuits where it's, they're just trolling. They're just looking for anyone who will, and they're looking for that settlement and you kind of have to give it to them because as you can see, people are losing. Is the internet over? Are we doomed? No, no, we're done. We're, everything's fine. Um, a lot of this has to do with sort of a, a coming to terms with how we should be building websites. Uh, a lot of people in our industry uh, just simply were not aware uh, of these regulations. Um, and more so businesses don't have the tools that they need to make sure that they're up to date. There's no building inspector for, for a website. There's no certification program. You don't go pass the bar when you're a web developer. You just, you read a book, maybe you take a boot camp, and then ah, I'm a web developer now. So it's on us to really get the word out, educate people, make sure people know that this is something that they're responsible for. And if they're not, then trouble. WCAG, we're not gonna get too deep into it. You can let your developers get really deep into that, but there's, there's four principles that you really need to know about if you wanna have an intelligent conversation about WCAG. These four principles are, it site needs to be perceivable, operable, understandable and robust. And they're sort of guidelines that define the rules and regulations and, and code that we need to apply to your website, that we need to build in there. Uh, perceivable, 
make sure people can actually use their senses, their sight, touch if they're using Braille, to interact with their website. Operable, they need to be able to use the website. Understandable. Not everybody has been using the internet as long as I and well, you if you're here watching this, I'm sure you're not a newbie, but there's still people who are getting on the web for the first time every day and they may not know what that little shopping cart, arc, shopping cart icon is. They need an explanation. They need alt text. They need uh, a tool tip that comes up if they hover their mouse that explains to them what these things are. It's understandable and robust. And this one's a little weird, but sites need to be built to work on all devices, whether it's a web browser, a mobile phone, or a Nintendo Wii, as we like to joke about in our team, uh, or, or devices that don't even exist yet. Which, which sounds impossible. Yeah, how can you build for something that doesn't exist yet? Well, the assumption is, is that future devices will also be keeping WCAG in mind. And thus, if we build to those standards, we will be building to future devices as well. Now, there are some testing tools that you can use. Wave, like Google Lighthouse, uh, otherwise known as uh, PageSpeed Insights, if you've ever gone to check how fast your site is. Um, uh, these are very useful, um, they can be very handy, and they actually are, are what gets used often in the case of those troll lawsuits where they're just scanning the web for sites that are not in compliance. They are, however, not the end-all be-all. You get a lot of false positives, you get a lot of uh, missed items, and more so, these tools can tell you if there are problems in your code that it can identify, but it, it can't tell you whether or not your site is actually a good experience for someone using a keyboard, for uh, someone using a screen reader. It can't tell you if you're going to get stuck in a tab loop where you're hitting tab and you can't escape this little overlay that's on the page. It can't tell you if the screen reader keeps getting interrupted by overlays. Testing tools are great. They're a good head start. They could show you the low hanging fruit and they can get you off some of the troll lawsuits radar. But to make sure you have a truly accessible website, you do need to do some manual testing on your own. And it's not enough to just do it once. Achieving and maintaining compliance takes constant vigilance. It is easier to do it right the first time when you're building that site code the first time. So much easier than going back and editing things after the fact. But uh, it's my hope, my assumption that your website is not a stagnant thing, that you're adding new posts or new products or new content or new third party plugins and vendor tools and rating systems. Uh, and as you add these new tools and this new content, uh, you need to ensure that you maintain ADA compliance uh, because many of these tools, many of these plugins, and even many of the minor updates that you may make to the site may break your compliance. Typically, this is something we advise handling during a code review or a release process that you just add an extra step to your release process. Hey, are we still ADA compliant? Does the screen reader still work well? Anything showing up on Wave or Axe or Lighthouse? But it does require regular upkeep. Blind people do wear makeup. This is an, an important concept to grasp because it's not just that companies are, are leaving money on the table. Customers that would like to buy their products that can't. It's not just a business decision, it's an empathetic one. These are people in our community and we have a, as a society have decided with this law, with ADA, as far as 30 years ago, decided that we care whether or not people have equal access. So it behooves us not just from a business sense, but from a people sense, from a humanitarian sense, to ensure that our websites are usable for everybody. And that is everything you need to know about accessibility on the web. Again, this has been Hutch from SwiftKick Web. Please look us up at swiftkickweb.com. And if you have any further thoughts, questions, comments, we'd love to hear them. Just drop them in the comments below or shoot us an email. If you don't mind, drop us a like and a subscribe. I'm sure Diane, our marketing person, would be very, very happy if you did. Thanks much, and we'll see you in our next video.